There are eight parts of speech, and we're gonna focus on what those eight parts of speech are. The first one that we're going to discuss is the noun. A noun is a word or group of words that names a person, place, thing, or idea. And there are four types of nouns. The first one is a common noun. And these are general, they're not specific at all. Some examples would be a store or a teacher. They're not naming a specific store or a specific teacher, so they're common. The next one that we're going to discuss is a proper noun. And a proper noun is specific. A proper noun is an official name of a person, place, or thing. So if I was going to give the store a specific or official name, I'd call it Myers. Or if I was going to give the teacher a specific or official name, it'd be Mrs. Shepherd. So I'm giving a specific name to the noun. Next, we're going to discuss the abstract noun. An abstract noun is a name of a quality or a general idea. And an example would be persistence. Or if I'm going to use an abstract noun in a sentence, I could say, I like the freedom to travel all over the world. Freedom in that sentence would be the abstract noun. The last noun that we're going to discuss is the collective noun. It's a collection, meaning it represents a group of persons, animals, or things. And some examples would be family or deer. In this case, you have family, and family represents parents, siblings, aunts, uncles. It's representing a group of people. Or you have deer, which is representing a group of an animal, such as does, fawns, and bucks. So they're collective. Next, we're going to discuss the pronoun. A pronoun is a word that takes place of a noun, another pronoun, or a group of words acting as a noun. And there are two types of pronouns. The first one that we're going to discuss is a personal pronoun. And I'm going to split it up into this table in which I'm going to talk about the first person, second person, and third person. And these will differ depending on if it's single or plural. So if I'm talking first person singular, I could say I or me. If it is plural, it's we or us. Second person, single and plural, happens to be the same, so it is you. And then if I'm talking third person single, I could say something along the lines of she, he, him, or her. If it is plural, you could say they or them. The next type of pronoun is a possessive pronoun. It does exactly what it says. It's possessive. It shows possession. So two sentences that I'm going to write here is that is my project and that project is his. So in the first sentence, I said that is my project. My is the possessive pronoun. You're saying whose project it is. And then in the second one, the project is his. Whose project is it? It is his. Next, we're going to go on to the adjective. And an adjective is a word or phrase or clause that modifies a noun or pronoun. And these tend to answer four questions. The first question is, what kind? The next one is, which one? Then you have, how many? And, of course, how much? An example of this would be the chemistry class. So what type of class is this? It is a chemistry class. Then you have, there were many classes. How many classes were there? There were many classes. So many would be your adjective in this example. Next, we're going to go on to discuss the verb. A verb expresses an action or state of being. And there are three different tenses of a verb. The first type of tense is present. Present is talking about the here and now. And you're discussing what's going on right then and there. You're talking in the present tense. So an example would be Bob works. Let's say I want to talk in the past. So if I'm talking to a friend about something that happened last week, I'm talking in the past tense. So if I said my niece opened presents at her birthday last week, she opened presents last week. So open would be past tense. Or sticking with the theme, Bob worked. Bob worked last week. 
Next, you have the future. So if you're talking about your future plans or let's say you're applying for a job and you're talking about your future aspects at that job, you would talk in the future tense. So Bob will work. So if you say, I will work at this hospital, you're talking about the future. Next, we're going to discuss linking verbs. And a linking verb links a subject to a noun, a pronoun, or a predicate adjective. And when we're discussing linking verbs, there's different ones that we can discuss. So to begin, we're going to discuss to be. There's different forms of to be, such as am, is, are, was, and were. So let's put these up here, and I'm going to give you an example. So let's say John is excited about school. Is is your linking verb. You're linking John to being excited about school. Next, we can do the five senses. So the five senses that we'll focus on are look, sound, smell, feel, and taste. So if I was to say I feel sleepy, how do I feel? I feel sleepy. Feel would be your linking verb in this case. Next, we're going to discuss the state of being. And there are multiple different types of states of being. Some that we're going to discuss here are appear, seem, become, grow, turn, prove, and remain. So if I were to say he became angry when he lost his keys, became would be your state of being. It is a linking verb because you said he became angry when he lost his keys. He became. Became is your verb. Next we have the adverb. And an adverb is a word, phrase, or clause that modifies a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. So for example, I could write, the doctor ran quickly. How did the doctor run? He ran quickly. Next, let's move on to conjunctions. A conjunction is a word that joins words, phrases, or clauses. And there are three types of conjunctions. First, there is the coordinating conjunction. And some examples of coordinating conjunctions are and, but, or, so, nor, for, and, yet. So these are your different types of coordinating conjunctions. Next, there's the correlative conjunctions. And three examples would be neither nor, either or, or not only. And the big thing that we look at here for neither nor is that you don't want to drop off the N. You do not want to do neither or. It needs to stay neither nor. Same with either or. It needs to stay this way. You don't want to say either nor. So keep it neither nor or either or. So these are a couple of the correlative conjunctions. Next we have subordinating conjunctions. And subordinating conjunctions join two clauses or thoughts. Some examples would be because if, until, or before. So let's go over a couple examples here. The first one would be, I wanted to go shopping, but I had no money. In this case, but would be a coordinating conjunction. Next, I could write, before you go clean your room. So before you go clean your room, in this case, I have a subordinating conjunction which is before. Next, let's move on to interjections. Interjections express emotion or exclamation. So let's go over two examples. So let's say I have the following sentence. We have covered a lot of material. You have a perfectly good sentence here, but if I wanted to add an interjection, I could say, yikes, we have covered a lot of material. Or if I was to write, that looks great, I could say, wow, that looks great. So I am putting in an emotion or exclamation, which is my interjection. And those are yikes and wow. Next, we're going to discuss the preposition. A preposition shows the relationship of a noun or pronoun to some other word in the sentence. A type of preposition would be a compound preposition. A compound preposition uses more than one word. Some examples of prepositions that we can go over are the following. The paper is due at noon. When is the paper due? At. 
at would be your preposition, is due at noon. Next you have, we're having class on the 5th of October. In this case, on is your preposition. When are you having it? You're having it on the 5th of October.